Good day, liberators and fellow South Africans. As I have predicted to happen, this past week, two adverse CCMA awards have been made against unvaccinated employees who chose not to adhere to the employers' so-called mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policies. We have said before that unvaccinated employees, when you go through these processes of mandatory COVID-19 uh, vaccination policies of your employer, and you are being prejudiced in any way, don't go to the CCMA. I did warn you, and this is exactly why because of these awards that are now uh, that have now been made why we said don't go there historically people have been brought up to believe that when you are an employee and you are unhappy with with your employee and you've got a dispute with him or her or it um simply go to the ccma and all your troubles will be will be solved and the ccma is such a nice place you can quickly get your money and then you are out of there yes when you accept the award the moment when you follow the ccma process you accept the award and it cannot be appealed you can only challenge a CCMA award by reviewing it. That is when the uh, com commissioner has misconducted himself or secondly rescind the award. Um, that is when um, you did not pitch up and um, the case was dismissed in your absence or um, there's a, uh, an a ambiguity in the award, so it's not clear what the award is supposed to be. Or the third one is when uh, there's a mistake common to both parties, which have to be dealt with. Those are the only instances when you can challenge a award made by the CCMA. So, unfortunately, in these two cases, in the one Teresa Mulderish took her employer, um, the Gold Rush Group, to the CCMA for terminating a contract, retrenching her, and she said that she was unfairly dismissed through the retrenchment process, a so-called Section 189 process, and uh, because Gold Rush believed that she could not fit in to their mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy uh, because she decided that it's her constitutional right not to get injected and, and the uh, uh, Teresa was self-represented. She argued that um, in line with her constitutional rights and uh, the commissioner basically said, oh, no, you know, sorry, they did have the right, they did follow the correct process in terms of 189, and I declare that you have not been unfairly dismissed. Poof. So that was the end of the line. I doubt whether there's going to be an instance where she can challenge the conduct of the commissioner or definitely not rescind it because all the parties were there and, and the award is quite clear and it does not seem whether there was a mistake common to both parties. In the other case, um, Gideon Koch took his um, employer in DACA security and services to court for uh, unfairly suspending him. It was for unfair labor practice. Um, the court said that they had all the right to uh, suspend you because you did not agree to the mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy. And in both these cases, neither one have physically went out and challenged the reason or, or the, the legitimacy of these COVID-19 vaccination policies of the employers. 
So sadly, it appears as if the line has come to an end for both Teresa and Gideon. And let me just share what you or they should have done. They should have taken their matters to the Equality Court. In the Equality Court, you don't need a lawyer to represent you and anyone may represent you in the equality court meaning that if you have got if you're not a member of a trade union or so then you can ask a very intelligent friend of yours or even your opa or your uh, your uncle who is uh, was a a retired um, legal practitioner to help you with your case and to argue your case before the Equality Court. The Equality Court has got one major uh, jurisdiction um, uh, uh, condition and that is you need to prove that you have been discriminated against and poof it is so easy at uh, the moment when you prove, which is definitely not difficult to do, that you were in a group called the unvaccinated employees and you have been treated differently than the vaccinated employee group, you have met the odds. Then the Equality Court has got jurisdiction to you, hear your matter. And further, uh, besides that, very importantly, the, uh, the Constitutional Court has once again confirmed only two years ago in 2020 that the High Court and the Labour Court have got joint or concurrent jurisdiction over labor matters. Let me go and quickly read to you, this is very important, in this matter, Baloy versus the public protector. And I quickly go to um, paragraph 24 of that judgment. The court here specifically, the Constitutional Court, our Apex Court, our highest court in the land, crucially, Section 157.1 does not afford the Labour Court general jurisdiction in employment matters and as a result, the High Court's jurisdiction will not be ousted by Section 157.1 simply because a dispute is one that falls within the overall sphere of employment relations and in paragraph 27 it's very clear however both the LRA and the Employment Act that is a reference to the uh, basic conditions of Employment Act expressly recognize that there are certain matters in respect of which the Labour Court and the High Court enjoy concurrent jurisdiction Section 157.2 of the LRA provides in relevant part, and I quote, The Labour Court has got as concurrent jurisdiction with the High Court in respect of any alleged or threatened violation of any fundamental right enshrined in Chapter 2 of the Constitution of the Republic of South Africa, 1996, and arising from a employment and from labour relations. Very key here is chapter 2 of the Constitution, that is the Bill of Rights. So the High Court, even if you are employed and you think that you need to refer your matter to the CCMA and, and, and the Labour Court in, in, uh, in terms of the Labour Relations Act, this specifically says that you can choose either going to the Labour Court or to the High Court. And why do I choose also going to the Equality Court? Very importantly, this is Equality Court sitting in the High Court of your province. So if you are uh, situated in Gauteng, you take the matter to the Pretoria High Court, the uh, Gauteng Division, sitting as the Equality Court. There's, there's forms that you need to comp uh, complete, straightforward, just like in the case of the CCMA. You complete it, 
uh, properly and then you submit it to the High Court's registrar. The registrar will then refer it to the clerk of the Equality Court sitting in the, uh, the, 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 uh, the High Court building and then your case is allocated to a judge. It's not just a simple commissioner, it's a judge. And you can even ask that your case may be heard by more than one. You can even ask that there should be uh, assessors appointed in your matter, meaning that it's well-trained people that know of your, your industry who are sitting with the judge to hear your case as, in, as part of the court and then the majority of the court, meaning that a judge and a assessor at least when there are two assessors must agree to the judgment so uh, this makes the whole process informal much better uh, much better regulated and as i've said in the beginning the key thing is that you can ask your friend or your your grandma anyone that you trust if you don't want to do it yourself to refer that matter and the only thing that you need to do is you need to prove that there was discrimination and uh, as I've said that you have been treated differently than uh, the vaccinated group and that resulted in the termination of your contract and then in the high court you you then challenge the breach of contract the as the means to get damage claim a damage claim awarded against you for damages and what we do is we calculate how many years are left until the age of retirement and then we calculate all the monies that you would have received up till the age of retirement plus a five percent annual increase that would then be your damages Yes, you will not get that full amount, but you will get exponentially much, much more money than you would have in the CCMA if the CCMA is going to find for you. So that is basically in a nutshell why we choose not to, um, to use the, the, the CCMA in this unvac or this vaccination policy issue specifically don't go that route we've seen what happened to Teresa and Gideon don't fall in the same trap and no it is not the end of the line um, these awards are not a precedence for others although commissioners do refer to them uh, from time to time um, made by other commissioners which it should not each case must be dealt with independently and on its own merits it's not like um, like in the precedent system of the High Court where the High Court must follow, follow the Supreme Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court of Appeal must follow the Constitutional Court. Uh, there's no such thing in the CCMA. So you still, we still have hope and a lot of hope. We are, um, very interestingly, we are about to take Gold Rush, who was the employer in the... Um, in the Teresa matter to uh, to the equality court sitting in the high court for three others who they have dismissed who are part of our group um, that application will most probably be lodged by next week uh, Tuesday um, and yeah for uh, for all the others um, there are still hope come in contact with us we do have uh, we don't expect anything in return for helping you and 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 um, uh, taking your matter to the Equality Court if we need to. Um, in most of our cases, we have seen that after negotiating with an employer, that the employer will lean towards accepting you on the basis that employees must just wear their mask and keep social distancing, etc., etc. But um, there are these strict gold rushes and DACA uh, security services who are very strict and they believe that they've got the right to implement all these infamous COVID-19 uh, vaccination policies. Um, as we have indicated 
it. There is no such thing as a mandatory COVID-19 vaccination policy. Thank you very much for supporting us. If you've liked this, please share it with others. As many as possible, employees must know what is going on. And uh, like, uh, like this video and also subscribe to our channel. And for those who, who like us more than just to be a prescriber, please join our channel. It's a monthly, a very sh uh, small monthly fee. Um, by paying that very small monthly membership fee to our channel, you are assisting us to keep on doing what we are doing. And there are, uh, are also special things that we are sharing with our members exclusively. Um, so thank a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for your support and uh, stay safe. God bless.